Okay, today I'm going to do a presentation on social, the way people in general <laughs> respond to malware, the threats of malware, and how that affects the current situation that we're in. I got a little bit of a headache, but hopefully I'll get over it. <laughs> There's a real catch-22 when you talk to people that aren't um, very well versed in security and that they're gonna somehow think that you're just pulling things out of your ass especially if you're a Linux user or God, you know, God forbid you like the Haiku OS or whatever some alternative operating system and they're always gonna think that you're just waiting for the day that the whole internet's going to break down and all the Windows users are going to come crawling to whatever brand of, you know, you know Linux or Haiku or <laughs> Open Solaris or, you know, whatever it is, FreeBSD or net, whatever flavor of the day you happen to be in. And clouds their judgment. There's a lot of things going on with the clouding of the judgment. And um, hopefully when you're dealing with whatever network environment that you're in, um, you can, uh, you're, you're going to deal, it's going to have to be a combination of you dealing with someone that's reasonable enough to accept uh, some countermeasures to the situation you might find yourself in, or um, you're going to have to up, up the skills. And I, <laughs> I guess I'll start with that. There are a uh, by no means am I going to claim I'm, I know every damn thing about about computers out there. No, by by no means. But I know I know enough, and I try to keep myself educated enough to uh, to know when there's a threat and um, you know, to, to, to tell when when <laughs> when, when something's uh, pretty bad. <laughs> I've been on this whole kick lately, recently. It kind of started out when um, a, a close relation to mine um, was, was browsing the net one day and suddenly this uh, antivirus 2010 something popped up or whatever on their computer. On her computer, and luckily she's She's, she's smart enough, uh, I think, um, to, to get off, the, you know, not to, just not to connect her computer up to the internet again and until such time she gets a new operating system installed. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be around to do that quick enough as I would like. But um, the whole theme of this whole thing is convenience versus... Um, versus the threat, and the, the, the actual threat, the perceived threat. That's the theme behind the reason why we have this problem right now. The reason why we have uh, the large, uh, very large numbers of botnets out there on the internet, I believe, is because it's a social problem. Um, from all sorts of players, <laughs> in this, in this, uh, it's not really an act, but um, all sorts of people that are taking on different roles, I'd say, in, in this whole system that's that's out there that's affecting um, the internet, the security of the internet. So, uh, but just start, you know, I have more exposure on a day-to-day -day basis with um, people that are, you know, in the accounting industry, right? And in the accounting industry, we're charged with keeping our clients' uh, data confidential. Um, that's that's one of our, our duties, right? And so when there's, from my point of view, when, when I know there's a technology out there that a professor from UC Santa Barbara made a presentation on at, at Google Tech Talks, and he says that um, over a, 
uh, over a 10 or 12 day period that he had taken over control of a Torpig uh, botnet that uh, he had literally collected gigabytes of client not client, but confidential information from individuals that Torpig was designed to collect and send back to the mothership. Gig, you know, not just one gigabyte, but, you know, could have been 100 gigabytes, or I don't know the exact number, but it's a gigabyte is, is a significant amount of data. Um, and it's, you know, if you're newer to computing, it's kind of harder to realize what that is, but uh, basically, you know, every book in the Library of Congress probably could make up a gigabyte of data. Okay, and and <laughs> that's uh, it's just a ridiculous amount. He thought there was the mathematically he came up with uh, a number that this Torpig botnet controlled about 135,000 computers at at its peak. That at any one time, the botmaster had control of 60,000 computers out there. And it'll just explain what happens. So, we're even talking about people with good practices, uh, you know. I guess I'll step outside the bounds of just the accounting industry. But, what happens is, is you're, you, got your, you have your computer, you have Windows on it, you bought your, your computer from the store and you didn't get a disc with it. Product restoration disc. It isn't really clear to you how to actually restore the system. When you boot in, I mean, you, you may or may not notice, I'm just talking about people in general, you may or may not notice there's a product res restoration option <laughs> when you boot in. You, um, these are just parameters, right? So some, well, I say some of the people may or may not. You know, we're, we're going from 100% of the population. We're knocking little parts down of people that are vulnerable. Is is is, is that's it's how, not we, but I. I am, this is the calculation that's in my head of all of the set of all the Windows users out there. Okay, these are all reasons why they would not react properly to a, an attack from malware, therefore increasing the likelihood of the malware to work. Okay, so you're, you, know, you have this, so you're not really sure how you're even going to restore this thing. And I think there's a lot of computers out there that are like this. You know, you don't, the newer ones don't come with the CD. Okay, and then you go to a web page and you think, oh, that's just spyware. That's just spyware. Well, spyware is hard. It's it is banner ads, but that's it. They they want you to click on it and they'll make money. No, nope, that's not all it is. But that's what people tell themselves to to think that. Well, okay, well, since my virus program didn't catch this, it's um, it's you know. You know, it's it's just malware, and malware is just a banner ad, and they want you to make you know. So it's not really a threat. It's annoying, but it's not really a threat. Okay. So you might go out there, you know, you think, well, of course it didn't. Virus program didn't catch it, but you know they have to get a malware program. So they look for malware bites or something like that, and they. Or, or hijack this, or you know, and they go on. They, and, and, and if they're, most people will just at most scan the, use the program once, and it'll say it caught something or other. We, we, we found this file at such and such, and we deleted it, and they won't scan again. They'll think they're done, everything's fine. Well, in the meantime, this program. What it does is it changes a little bit after it's downloaded to a form by which your malware bytes or your antivirus program won't won't be able to catch it or delete it. 
That, that's that's a fact. I'm not making this up. If you don't believe me, you could watch uh, the presenter from UC Santa Barbara. You could watch um, the guy that did the Black Hat presentation <coughs> about banner ads and drive-by downloads at Google Tech Talks. All these things. You, you can read reports. If you really actually look beyond just reading what the antivirus vendors tell you, and you actually look at actual people that are doing research, the HoneyNet project, um, SANS Institute, <coughs> maybe Cisco, they, you know, they're, they're going to actually tell you what happens and a lot of the time these, what, see there's a whole system in place. As these computers get compromised, they all, all these compromised computers work together under the control of the individual that's making this virus software or malware and what happens is is that every once in a while when he thinks his virus is starting to get caught by these antivirus programs he just changes it a little bit so it won't get caught and he's able to from from a shell command line like when you open up your DOS prompt in Windows <coughs> type is type some command and deliver that new version of his software that will avoid the, the virus out, out into the wild all, to all the machines that are infected, which by the way have turned the virus programs off even though they appear that they're running. And then if he wants to, he may um, have you know, someone make, send him an email or a message or ask him to could you please take down this? Um, I'll pay you uh, such you know so much amount of money for you to take down this website for a couple hours. Blah blah blah. Okay, I'll do that. Types something in the command line, walks away, <laughs> stops it a couple hours later, and it makes it makes news. Um, some of these uh, compromised computers in mass will respond to researchers trying to figure out what they're doing and start sending what's called a denial of service attack, which is what I just described. Some people actually make money off of this, right? So your computer that, that's infected, but you've decided that you don't want to bother with anymore or just the one scan's good enough, 